Sample Tank 3 has three main pages, Play, Mix, and Edit. Let's take a look at the Edit page. Click the Edit button to open a Synthesizer Panel Style Editor for the currently selected instrument. This is where you can fine-tune or radically reshape your instruments with extensive synthesis controls. There are blocks for each section of the editor. The top block is the part section that mirrors most of the controls on the play and mix pages, like MIDI channel, volume and pan, but also adds some additional controls, like polyphony, where you can set or limit the number of simultaneous notes a part will play, transpose, where you can shift the incoming MIDI note data in semitones to play in different keys, and then two sets of range controls, where you can limit the range in which the part will play. The note range creates a window on the keyboard where the part will only play within the selected boundaries. This is useful for creating keyboard splits for live performance, where you want a specific sound to only play on one part of the keyboard. Then the velocity range creates a window where the part will only play within the selected velocity boundaries. This lets you add or subtract parts depending on how hard you hit the key. Imagine a piano sound that has strings layered at the low velocities and then fortissimo brass layered at the high velocities. You can set up velocity splits like this easily using multiple parts. And speaking of parts, here on the edit page you can switch between the 16 parts using the column on the far right. This actually lets you edit your full multi right here from the edit page. You'll notice that the edit blocks from the second row on down are a darker gray than the top row. This is because the top row contains part parameters, settings that apply to the actual part independent of the instrument that's loaded into it. But then the next four rows are all about the instrument that is loaded into the part. First we have the sample block. Here you can set the basic sample characteristics of the instrument, starting with pitch in semitones, fine tuning and pitch bend amount. Then we move to the type of playback engine, standard resampling, pitch shift time stretch, where you have independent control of the sound's pitch and timing, and then our stretch engine with options for stretch note or stretch phrase. At the end of the block, you have the pan control. This is the panning for the instrument itself or even the zone within the instrument. Whereas the pan control in the block above is for the part, the location where the instrument is loaded into. If you want to save the pan position of the actual instrument, set the pan position in the sample block. Next you have a block where you can disable round robin playback and also choose the element within the instrument that you want to edit. This is especially important in the case of a multi-articulation instrument as you want to be sure you're editing the right articulation within that instrument. The next row starts with the filter block. Choose from 10 different main filter types, then choose the slope of the filter below. Next to that are the familiar cutoff frequency and resonance knobs, and there's also a filter overdrive control that becomes available in certain filter types. The velocity block lets you select how the various synthesis blocks will respond to how hard you press the key. You can set the amount that velocity will modulate amplitude, or volume, pitch, filter resonance, filter cutoff, the depth of LFO1, and the level of the envelope 2 sustain here in the velocity block. The next row contains the LFO block. Each LFO, or low frequency oscillator, has its own controls for speed, depth, and fade in amount, as well as the wave shape for the LFO. Then you set how much the LFO will affect the instrument's pitch, filter cutoff, volume, or panning. Note that only LFO2 can modulate panning, and only LFO1 can be faded in. The bottom row contains the envelope block. Here you can set the shape and speed of two envelopes. Envelope 1 controls amplitude, or volume, and envelope 2 can shape the filter and modulate pitch. Some instruments may have other custom routings as well. Set the times for attack, hold, decay, and release, as well as the level of the sustain when the decay stage completes. The knobs to the right of each set of envelope sliders determine how much the envelope will affect the level, the filter cutoff, and the pitch of the instrument. Finally, there's the key block, where you can change the keyboard mode from polyphonic to three different kinds of monophonic settings. Here you can also change the portamento time and curve for the two mono legato settings. The bottom bar of Sample Tank 3 lets you create and edit MIDI continuous controller assignments to allow custom controllers to change the settings in each part. 
Use the Learn button to assign a Sample Tank 3 parameter to an external controller. First, click Learn to activate the MIDI Learn function, then click the Sample Tank 3 parameter you want to control. Then finally, move the external controller that you want to use to control the parameter. You'll see the MIDI CC number appear in a black box above the Sample Tank 3 parameter. Note that you can assign MIDI continuous controllers throughout Sample Tank 3, and not just on the edit page. Click the Control button to see a list of MIDI controllers assigned for each part. You can change parts in the control window. Here you can change the assignment by double-clicking on a value, or you can remove an assignment altogether by first selecting it, then clicking the Remove button.